I love it. We start the podcast straight in with a cup of tea because it's absolutely Baltic outside. Hi, uh, everybody. Welcome to the Mind Management uh, uh, podcast where we, uh, myself, uh, mind management and mentoring other cultures into the profession of coaching. It's it's a fantastic profession to be in. It has its ups and downs. And I think today we're going to probably talk about that as well because I think there's, I'm sure you, I, I well, let's introduce you first of all before we go into it. I know because I do. I like to ramble sometimes. Uh, George, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're well. So my name is Cuddy Says. It's George Zelinsky. Um, I'm uh well, I'm I'm, I'm many things. Uh, to to be honest, um, I freelance as a leadership development consultant. I run my own tr- um, NLP training school. I'm a coach. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. So many. Um, many hats that I wear in a professional context. Um, so I'm delighted to be here talking all things NLP today with you, Curry. Thank you very much, George. We love that. We're, and the reason I asked you to come onto the podcast is because we do the same thing. We do the leadership, we do the NLP and coaching. And I, I come from a place of abundance. There's enough for everybody. And I think sometimes I see a lot of coaches, no, that's for me, that's for me, That's let's not help them. And I'm like, no, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. We no. That's the whole premise of everything that we do, which is why I wanted to come on, because we I, I'm versed in hypnotherapy, but I never used it. And we'll we'll get into that conversation why later. But right now we are going to deep dive the power of NLP. But I want to ask you, George, how did you first find out about NLP? What was it that brought you to NLP? The where, where the journey all began. Yeah. Uh... I was working in financial services, dull as dishwater, I know. Um, I worked for a a well-known high street global bank. Um, I I won't tell you which one because it's the one that nobody likes, but uh, clue is in the accent, of course. Um, (laughs) And uh, yeah, do you know, I I had a a variety of roles there, um, ventured in, or I just kind of landed, I guess, in sort of, HR and learning and development. So I was working with all these different external training providers. Uh, you know, I was, I was benefiting from all this great behavioral and cultural learning and development. And, and I was just getting exposure to all these interesting, exciting, engaging, and really dynamic people. And, you know, when I started to, you know, wonder, you know, what, what is it that you've got that I'm liking? And I want a wee bit of that. NLP started coming up time and time again and uh, then I started to find out a bit more about it, started to get interested in it when I was uh, delivering um, behavioural training internally within the organisation I was starting to you know, leverage more and more of it into my uh, practice I guess and when I got that um, marvellous opportunity of uh, redundancy, grabbed it with both hands and, uh, yeah, set up on myself. And actually, do you know the first thing I'd done when I got my uh, re- redundancy package was uh, booked myself on an NLP practitioner course. That was back in 2011. Um, trotted off down to London for a week and done a, a, a week's residential um, programme. And that just... At that moment, uh, am I going to be cheesy and cliched? Do it. I'm going to be cheesy and cliched. It changed my life. Genuinely, genuinely changed my life. Um, you know, the so, some of the, I guess, analogies that we use when we talk about NLP, oh, you can see the world through new eyes. Genuinely, hand on heart, that was the, that was the lived experience for me. Um, I, you know, all of the, the thoughts and um, considerations I'd had throughout my professional life and my professional career and trying to, just so many dots all joined up, you know, over a, a, a seven day journey and very much gave me a, a new kind of platform to be able to operate from um, in every aspect of my life. So it was really a magical time and uh, never ever looked back from there. Um, I, you know, that led into my, my freelance career and uh, 
Yeah, that was that was the start of the start of the journey, I guess. And and you know, I must have been probably mid mid thirties about then. I, I think you know, particularly guys, right? We kind of get to this space in our um, mid thirties where we start to have those thoughts. Oh, there has to be more to life than this. And am I really, you know, um, fulfilling my purpose? And like, and all these big questions start to arise. So I was kind of in that space, and you know, the the, the universe just kind of aligned and redundancy come and I'd you know I heard of this thing and got the funds to go and do it and I just just you know um, the, the 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 moment happened and I uh, grabbed it with both hands and so glad that I did. Yeah. Your journey to NLP was completely different to mine. You I've, I've I think you've shared briefly with me yours before. Tell Aye. tell me about that. So cuz I found NLP because I didn't know I was depressed. I thought depression was, I thought depression was a mental illness. I thought it was something that sick people had. I, I, and I, so I had, uh, I had nervous breakdown and it was mid thirties. I wrote down because she said mid thirties. So I was, I was working at Royal Caribbean. I had a failed audition and I just couldn't cope with the, the failure. I couldn't cope with what had happened. I'm like, no, I'd done everything I was supposed to do. I'd done everything the gurus had told me to do. And I spiraled for six months and it got to a point where my wife said, whatever you're going through is now starting to affect me. So I I didn't understand victim mindset. I didn't understand NLP. I didn't understand depressed. I read a book and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm depressed. Holy, holy moly. I didn't know. And I went to the doctors and the doctors was like, yeah, it sounds like you're depressed and you've got these options. And I'm like, and the, the, straight away he said, oh, have you got suicidal thoughts? I'm like, no, I don't really have, no. Because I that's what I thought depression was. And it was like, well, because you can call the Samaritans. I'm like, no, I don't want to call Samaritans. I just want this to go away. I want these feelings that I'm having, these thoughts. Are, what is wrong with me? Again, what is wrong with me, right? So the brain has to answer, well, this is what's wrong with you, right? So we get caught in that loop. And I, I think I Googled this when Kindles first came out. I Googled how to overcome depression. And I was like, it just this book looked like it was it was NLP and oh try NLP. There's lots of stuff about NLP, and I'm like, what's NLP? And then I got a book, and I was like, oh, the first book I ever read, which I don't think was NLP, but the first book that just fired off all my neurons was "Stop Thinking, Start Living" by Richard Carlson. Okay. And I was like, tick, tick, tick. All right, it's not just me because that was it. No, it's not just me. And then that's when I was, I was like, all oh, right, there must be another book. And it was NLP, NLP, NLP. So I got the NLP, but I can't remember the name of the NLP book. I'm looking at my bookshelves and I'm like, right, okay. So that's how I started getting out of my spirals, out of my funks because of the conversations, the thoughts and the processes. Started understanding emotions and started, and that that's why, it, so that's why I'm passionate about, passionate about NLP and right. also, yeah, that's the reason why. So it's different journeys to NLP, but we found it, and I because I didn't understand. So that's why I, I coach people with, with all those kind of things, and it's really. And and you know, and I think um, you know, I, that, what, what you say resonates with me. I can think of uh, several several people that uh, I have had on practitioner training programs in the past, or you know, even a couple that um, I've just had conversations with at the prospect to learning NLP and and I'm actually not too dissimilar for uh, the experience you've described. Actually, I've, I've, had, I've had, I could probably recite conversations that um, I'm interested in in NLP because I've been through years of counselling, psych- psychotherapy and, and, and other things and nothing ever really worked for me until, until somebody introduced me to NLP. So I am in a good place now. Um, but I want to learn more about it. So that type of idea and theme, and, and that's, do you know what, what I love about that as well, about what you've, what you've described is um, you, you, you chose action as a means because what you've immersed, your, your action is immersing yourself in learning. Yes. Right? Uh, learning and that's and that's action that's you know that that is proactivity whatever you know um way, way that you look at it and and and, and that's good because that's what we want to that's what we want to cultivate right proactive preventative protective actions that that serve us and help us not just overcome some of the adversities that we've experienced but help um set us up for more abundance in our life going forward so 
love that. Love that a lot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I that's that's the reason I love it, and I, it's funny because you get I, just the the skills that you learn from NLP for coaching to especially for managements and and leaders. Because I used to use. I remember working at Royal Caribbean and I'd, I'd done NLP and I, I'd done a course and then I, I found out about NLP and leadership and I was like, oh my God, because people used to come to me as the cruise director and I was like, why do I have to find out all their answers and stuff like that? And it was a coaching book and I just remembered it was like, do this and you'll never have to answer a question for your staff ever again. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to try this. And I tried it. I could have left the room because they all resolved their own stuff out in 15 minutes. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's I'm going to have to remember that for one of the trainers I've got coming up is how to resolve other people's stuff and leave the room. It was one of the it was a, such a powerful thing. And I, that's why I love it. And that's why when we had went for a coffee, I was like, I just well, let's have a chat. Let's talk about NLP, because there's so much when you really look at NLP, there's a lot of people say, oh, NLP doesn't work. And I'm like, how does it not work? It's the fundamental. It's literally how we operate on a daily basis. <laughs> how can it not work? It's just impossible not to work. Yeah, yeah, completely. You know, I can't agree any more than that. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so sometimes, yeah, sometimes there's a perception that NLP is um, processes or behaviors or actions that are that are done to us where you know me and you know it's less about that right it's much more about how we behave and interact uh with each other's so that old chestnut what you kind of put in and invest you get you get back out right um but uh yeah yeah a, a powerful toolkit right a powerful toolkit um, in terms of your point around uh like for helping or encouraging people to think act and do for oneself um, find their own answers, find their own way, then yeah, that, I guess that's what all these behavioural change processes or um, behavioural technologies or whatever you want to refer to them as help. I mean, personally, I've never been afraid to say to anybody if they ask me a question that they expect me to know the answer to, to say, I have no idea, but, you know, let me know when you find out and move on, you know, um, and in a way that doesn't alienate, of course, uh, but uh, yeah, do you know, and just passing, passing responsibility and accountability back to the, the individual to seek and find, right, it's, it's pretty, it's so simplistic, but it's pretty potent and powerful and transformational stuff as well, that's why, you know, not just the sort of formal processes work but the, the 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 concepts and the foundations and the basis that underpins a lot of the the, the tools processes practices that nlp teaches us so magic stuff indeed what is your favorite takeaway from nlp what's what's the one thing that you use for yourself the most um the one thing one thing I suppose um, in, a, in a sort of formal tool or process sense, it would be what we call perceptual positions, right? Which yeah. is ultimately ultimately a feedback tool. Um, so, so, you know, given a lot of my work is in the corporate space, um, when, when I do weave NLP tools or principles into, um, into, into my work in the corporate space, um, perceptual positions is typically one that's... Um, that, that just resonates and it's, it feels more usable and accessible for professionals in the corporate space because it's ultimately ultimately analysis and feedback which um you know anybody anybody that's working in a, a sort of continuous improvement environment which almost every business is finds that useful so just the ability to kind of step out of one's shoes and see situations and inst instances from multiple perspectives and you know spend a minute reflecting on what the lessons and what the insights are looking at um you know that a situation that's happened from the the other persons for the clean third for the observer the fly on the wall the neutral and partial viewpoint and just you know and there's the visualization element to it as, uh, to it as well of course but you know being being able to do that we don't do that when we're in a fast paced crazy busy ever changing environment so you know when when we, we use tools like that 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 allow us the space to kind of step back and 
breathe and think wider, deeper, broader than what we normally do by ourselves in our own mind. Or most yeah. of the time, it's pretty powerful stuff. So that would definitely be the the one thing that um, has helped me personally through some of the SHIT and um, adversity that I've experienced myself in life. Um, personally and professionally, but certainly in a in a, in a business and uh, co corporate sort of L and D space, I would say that's probably the the the, the tool I, I use more of because um, because it resonates in that in that uh, field, I guess, um, a bit yeah. more than some of the others. Yeah. What about you? Um, because of the impact it had on me and for negative thinking, um, I always remember creating a happy space for, for when I was, um, so I used to work at Royal Caribbean, so I used to have to go to different ships. So when, um, you used to have to do a welcome aboard show. Oh, okay. So I always liked the part of creating a safe space for me to calm down and get into uh, a positive empowered state before I go on stage. Cause I knew my speech, yep. but I'd had a. I'd had a failing in the past where I'd forgotten my speech and then that yeah. caused the, the downward spiral because it was an audition. So I was yeah. like, well, I know my speech, but I, I don't want to go down that spiral again. So I used to step into a circle and I'd create that happy emotional state before I went on. And it was creating a happy uh, happy space that whenever you felt, felt like you were going down for a spiral. And I always use, uh, I actually, I, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that buy uh, snap bands off me. So I have snap bands that you snap Send a signal to your brain, change your thought. Just change oh, the one brain. of these. Uh, actually, oh, it's, it's a band. I don't know if I've got them around. Um, actually, I've got one. I've got them in different colors. It's a band that you put on. It's an elastic band. Oh, Just, like these things. Yeah, but it's it's more it's more um uh, uh, pingy. Pingy. Oh, strange. <laughs> It is. It's more pingy. I don't think that's a professional term in NLP. Technical term. Pingy effect. Um, that's that's a new. We'll create a new NLP from that. Um, and it was to to change the negative thoughts, catch them, and go back to a memory uh, and anchor a, a positive space. And you, I don't know if you know it actually, but my happy space still to this day that's still anchored to that is down La uh, Largo Links, and I'm pointing oh. as if everybody knows where Largo Links is, but down the old railway line, Largo Links, there's a bench with the beach and the smells. I can still evoke the smells. I can still evoke the memories, the the, the sound, and it still makes me happy. Believe it or not, I told my wife when I die, that's where she's got a bury, uh, she's got to scatter me uh, ashes uh, for, for the empowering space. I still go back to that anchor. Still go back to that anchor. So that's I like anchors. That's what I probably took away uh, with from NLP. Nice, nice. It's, it's a big, it's, I would say it's a big favourite for for a lot of people uh, anchoring. But I, you know, you you reference the the, the circle of excellence, which is, uh, and, and and you know, a lot of people don't always. Uh, reflect on the different type of anchors as well. So your circle of excellence, that's a spatial anchor, right? And it's great because it allows you to create that metaphorical space that you can just bung, throw, endow all these positive resources that you need for moments when you need the most into that space and fold it up and put it in your back pocket, pull it out whenever you you, you need to go on stage or, you know, whatever, whatever your context is, right? Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so, so it's a, that's, a, that's a great one. Um, I, I love that. And uh, I, but I mean, so it's more general speed. I mean, we've got we experience anchors all the time, don't we? Environmental anchors, um, kinesthetic anchors, which is your touch, your um, uh, um, olfactory anchors. When we smell something, it takes yeah. us back to a specific place. We hear, us, we hear music. Um and uh, yeah, it takes us back to a particular time, and I like these are all anchors, aren't they? Sensory anchors, so um, I can can be used. Can, all of them can be used in such um constructive, helpful uh, ways, and uh, I I think you, you, the more anchors we can sort of put in our life with good and intentful and purposeful um action, I think I think it's a helpful thing. So I love that a lot. I love it. Perfect. So when you are, because you let's let's talk about hypnotherapy as well. Because I know we touched on hypnotherapy, right. and you you talked about clinical hypnotherapy. Um, how 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 does 
hypnotherapy differ for, for, for NLP for you? Um, I'm not sure that it does. Um, I mean, a, part, a big part of the NLP is just modelled on hypnotherapy, the yep. practice of Milton Erickson. So, um, so a lot of the, a lot of the, well, some some of the ideas, some of the concepts, some of the tools are just be are, are just modelled. I mean, NLP is just all modelling, isn't it? Um, lo looking at what um, success is. Um, codifying it and replicating it. I mean, that is in its most basic form. NLP and uh, and, and hypnotherapy and uh, has, has has been used in part part of that modelling. So, um, I, I wouldn't say necessarily differs. Uh, the I guess the difference in terms of some of the behavioural change processes is that uh, they don't in NLP you don't necessarily need need to be in trance. Hey, but arguably even in, in hypnotherapy for some of the suggestion or some of the helpful resourceful suggestion that we make you didn't need to be in um, hypnotic trance either I, people often get quite mystified and have, have some misconceptions about what uh, hypnotic trance is so um, it's, it's a state of just being relaxed and open to possibility um, so, hey, whether you're sitting with your eyes closed, visualising someone, listening to an, to an NLP practitioner's voice, or whether you're lying on, you know, my, my, my sofa with your feet up and um, me trying to get you and, and facilitating you into a deeper state of relaxation, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just different levels of consciousness. And, uh, you know, we, we all have the ability. Everybody has the ability. We're all experts a, a, a hypnotic trance you know if you if, if you daydream you're in trance if you find yourself scrolling aimlessly wide-eyed you're in hypnotic trance if you're on if you're driving a car and oh suddenly you go you go a, a route that you didn't mean to take you're in hypnotic trance you're driving down the motorway and you're your mind someplace else, but you're still in it's motorway trance. It's all hypnotic trance. We're all experts at it. Everybody has the capacity to go into it. So um, for, for me, it's about how they complement each other, actually. And the, the reason the reason I um, uh, studied and qualified in hypnotherapy um, was, it was twofold, because um, I wanted to um, maximise the power and explore other so uh, that was professional curiosity. I wanted to um, explore, you know, greater impact with these NLP processes that um, I, I'd become aware of. Um, but also for when I'm training and teaching NLP as well, I think having a background uh, and having experience in hypnotherapy, given that a lot of these processes are modelled on, uh, you know, probably the world's most renowned clinical hypnotherapist, Milton Erickson, uh, then... Uh, then yeah, I, you know, I felt it just added to my credibility. Um, so I that they were they were all the reasons that I um pursued it. But um, yeah, I'm glad I did because there there is you know the the they complement each other nicely. And uh, actually, I was training a, a group a um recently qualified hypnotherapists um in my NLP practitioner course and. Uh, and, and in hypnotherapy, the hypnotherapy teaches some NLP processes, but I had the opportunity to really um, go into depth with them and really um, really dissect these processes and talk about, you know, which um, work better in trance, how we, you know, how we could use this out of trance, how and what point would it be helpful to induce... And, you know, we, we, we really went down the rabbit hole um, with it, and it was really... It was really um, invigorating actually uh, so so yeah yeah com complementary each other i'd say yeah i i talk i actually do um i i do you know it's, it's meditation because i've all i've not i can't find the definitive answer okay. and i've kind of found the definitive answer because i love meditation meditation every every book and a self-help book that i went through the, the back end of the book was always you got to try meditation Got to do meditation. That will t train you to not engage with every thought that's going. And I was like, oh, that's that's hogwash. Bear in mind, I'm this big, burly, strongman guy, six <laughs> foot two, four feet wide. Uh, at one point in my life, I couldn't control my tears and my emotions on a daily basis. I just felt like I was going to erupt. <laughs> What's bloody meditation? I'm not doing that. Two weeks changed my life. Two weeks of really? meditation. 
of saying it's going to be a struggle. You're not going to like it. Keep doing it. Start off doing two minutes, then work to five minutes. I started crying when I first started meditating because that was the release. And then after two weeks, my wife was like, who's this person? I'm like, yeah, meditation, meditation. And that's how I find out about the states of consciousness, the alpha wave, brain, uh, brain waves, the delta waves and the hypnotic trances and stuff like that. I did look into hypnotherapy and I, I got a book. I think it was it was the Ericksonian book. And I'm sure it was the, the opening chapter of the book. The opening chapter of the book said, warning, thought transference. And I went, I'm not doing hypnotherapy. I can't sit in a session and if I'm having a thought, it's going to get transferred to someone. It just put me off hypnotherapy. And that's not a warning to anyone. That, oh, well, I know I can't do hypnotherapy because I've spoken to a lot of hypnotists and they're all like, never read that. I don't even know where that's come from. That's that. It's, it's, it's a thing, but it's not a thing at the same time. And I'm like, right, okay. But it just kind of put me off. But then I found meditation and I, I love uh, the silver. I, I found the silver method and I was like, it states clearly there in the silver. Have you read the silver method? No, no. I, I know very little about meditation. Um, see? I, I, I meditation see the, see, and hypnosis is the same thing. I see the I see the similarities. I don't yes. understand the differences because I've no um I was gonna say studied, but um I think it's even less paid paid attention enough attention. I've uh, got the book. Differences. I'll give you the book. Next time we meet up. I'll bring the book. I've got the silver method. It's a phenomenal book. The the silver method. I found it. Paid quite a lot of money for it for, for the older version uh, of it. Um, and it's it is really cool. And it does say that hypnosis and meditation, same thing. You can administrate yourself. And I was like, wow, that was the the thing. So silver method. I absolutely I absolutely love. I think it's brilliant. And I think it was a really good book for anyone uh who, who's going into that area i think the silver method is a great thing for, for to people to learn i i really enjoyed that i did yeah yeah no well that's really interesting to hear because uh um yeah i mean i've i've i've, I've listened to some uh meditations and i know you do your hypnotic your um uh your meditation. i call it a hypnotic meditation just because i was trying to be different <laughs> no no i hear you i hear you and uh yeah, you know, I've listened to sort of like, oh, you get them on, on, on Apple Music. Yeah. You know, on Spotify and uh, stuff like that. And, and, I've, and I've, you know, I've, I've thought, oh, no, what's, you know, there's just a lot of suggestion yep. in, in this, right? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the act of meditating feels very similar to self hypnosis or, yep. you, uh, you know, I mean, I give my hyp hypnotherapy clients uh, recordings. Um, that they stream on, uh, you know, a platform that I that I use, and uh, yeah, so real interesting and reassuring to hear yes. this actually, Cody. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So for anyone who's listening to the uh, the podcast, uh, grow yourself is your business, right? Is grow is it grow yourself or grow, what? What it's, it's a solid book. It was fantastic. Myself, <laughs> grow grow myself. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, Yes, I. So that's uh, that's my that's my one of my my my, my brands, and uh, yeah, that's a that's a myriad of uh, um, personal and professional development, um, uh, coaching, hypnotherapy, um, operate in the the online space, and uh, the, I guess the the freelance work is more in the in the corporate environment. But hey, I'm on a bit of a mission with it all, Cuddy. I must admit, and yeah. have been some while you know because uh um I, i'm really fortunate and really privileged that i get exposure to um you know some of the world's biggest organizations public yeah. and private sector and, and, and it kind of pees me off a wee bit actually and in the sense that um big corporations and you know i'm not knocking it because hey you know i yeah it's, it's my daily bread and butter and i really relish and thrive and i'm really grateful for uh the the, the work every single day and i know man, i know not many people uh can say that so when i use the word privilege i'm not underestimating it but um i i see that um the the type of development uh that large corporations are and their, and their people within them are are experiencing and they've got the budget to to invest in their people and um, and I see this quality a, a development and I think you know this needs to be more accessible to the rest of the world not just the big corporations yeah. that have got big bucks um, so, so my, my mission is all about that is taking um, world class L and D which is 
you know, psychology, behavioral science based, taking, you know, and translating it into simple tools and tactics and tips and strategies that, you know, every individual, every family, every team, every group, every community has access to should they want it or should they need it. And not just the big companies that have got the mega bucks to be able to and invest in that. So that's that's a big part of my mission is to make high quality and really exciting and engaging learning, um, you know, re really accessible to, to 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 all. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with that sentiment. Um, I've started working with two businesses that have, have just put me on retainer for training and coaching. So we. We do um so try go into the businesses and do training, take stuff from from NLP, from from mindset, from life coaching, yeah. help people with their confidence and those kind of things. And then we talk about trauma, mental health, and mindset. I, I think mindset and mental health are right at the side of each other. I don't think there's a separation, to be honest with you. I think if you've got a great mindset, you'll have great mental health. Um and the businesses that I'm working with at the moment of like, right, we'll put you on retainer. I want my team at work and I want them happy. Great. And I have to say, it's not the bigger corporations. I know I'm talking to a big corporation at the moment, but it's not the bigger corporations like, no, we're investing. We're investing right now. We we want growth. So it's out there, George. I can tell you now it's out there because I'm working with a fabulous business in, in Perth that's really got massive goals for their business. Um, so it is out there. And there's work for loads and loads of coaches, in all fairness, if, they, if they've got the mindset to go for it. It really has. It, it, yeah, it, it, well, do you know, I, th I think for, for guys like you and me, it's the it's the SMEs that we, you know, that we're much more likely yeah. to have direct client relationships with uh, big corporations. And, um, you know, for us to go direct, we need to get on preferred supplier lists and there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape and security clearances and all that jazz that we have to break through, which is really, really difficult. Um, so I, you know, and, and, and actually I think, I think as well as the SMEs is where the real opportunity and, and no opportunity just for, you know, to attract and attain yeah. uh, work, the, 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 the opportunity to really make a difference. Yeah. Um, because you know, I, I guess we, we smaller, you know, and I'm generalizing, I get that, but we uh, smaller, smaller, medium sized businesses, you know, where they've not necessarily had the, the, the budget the you know to, or or even the will to invest in the the, the people through great learning and development uh you know, there's there's a rawness there there's a greenness there's that kind of sponge metaphor where people once they're exposed to new ideas concepts and you know all the things that we talk about you know that we yeah. somewhat take take for granted I think. Um, it's it's you know it's it's me um, learning NLP back in two thousand and eleven where stuffs you know these light bulb after light bulb moment and it just becomes transformational. So for for me this is the area where people like me and you can add the most yeah. value and uh, the, the, I think the biggest opportunity sits. So uh, I hats off to you. That's a that's a great job. Yeah, no, we're we're, we're loving it, and uh, the, the the concepts that people are are getting into is um having the ability to see the the coach or see the trainer, and then say, oh, I would like to work with that person. Not a problem. It's it's all covered for the businesses that have got that mindset. Um, have have really took to it, and then because of that, I've been getting introductions to boxers, uh, world class athletes that they know and they're sponsoring and like right not a problem we can do the anchors we'll do some visualizations we'll we'll work out and find out what's stopping them so it, it is it's it's all out there and that's the beauty of the, the podcast and everything else like that george for, for, for everyone so um how do we find you george tell me get me on social media um i'm jay i'm, I'm old school i'm bar embarrassed to say and by old school i mean email i mean <laughs> Going retro here, Cuddy, right? You can get me <laughs> on email. <laughs> uh, I, but no, you can find me on social media. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty, uh, lot, lots of ways to, to find me. And my, my surname's quite... Um, I know, uh, what is that surname? What's the origin of that? Zelensky? Polish. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's Polish. I, uh, Zelensky, just as it sounds. Sounds like the Ukrainian president, but spelt differently, right? Aye. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I uh, know many of us around, so quite easy to find on uh, social media and, and whatnot. Oh. Companies myself as well. Co. Uk. So check out my website. Um, 
see if anything takes your fancy. I've got my NLP courses running in the short and medium term. So lots of ways to get involved, lots of ways to interact. And yeah, happy days. Perfect. Nice one. As always, make your mind a priority. And if it's, if it's in the mind, it can be managed. I see it's <laughs> absolutely everybody. Um, and that's it's never as hard as we like to think. Um, and and the, the, the benefits of working with mind management coaches, NLP, hypnotherapy, it's all there for you. It genuinely is. I'm going to have to stop the podcast because the dog is right here and he's desperate to get out. He's really, really, uh, I know that's his side. That's his code. I'm like, right, okay. So as always, big love from Cuddy and we'll see you in the next uh, episode of The Mind Management Mentors. <laughs>